What up, piano fam? Your piano teacher, Tim, here. And today, I'm going to show you some awesome, great-sounding pieces to learn that are fun and on the easier side to play. So let me show you the first one. First piece. Okay, the first piece is Canon in D. And I really love this one for people that are more on the beginner side. Um, one, it's in an easier key signature, two sharps, F and C. But the great thing about it is you have this repeated bass line that repeats over and over and over and over and over throughout the piece. And basically what's happening is each time that bass line starts over, um, this guy... Every time it starts over, it gets more and more slightly complex with your right hand. Let me get the piano here, because that's what kind of lesson we're talking about here. So, um, and then when it comes in again, so you're adding in some left hand notes, but it, or right hand notes, but it's pretty simple. And then as you can see, when it comes in yet again, it's the same bass line, but you're adding in chords now. Just like that and then as you can see it gets more and more complex each line that goes in and that's great for beginners because what that does is that introduces you to that opening bass line and you get used to playing that and um, so you get really accustomed to that and each time it just layers on something new so you're just much more prepared to play the next line that's just a little bit more complex than the last rather than just jumping from something that's easier to something that's really really hard and difficult right away um, that you know might throw you off so great choice for beginners canon and d by taco bell i mean paco bell i seriously thought it was taco bell the first time i heard it next piece all right piece number two let me show you next piece is fur elise hey that kind of rhymes um, this one is a classic. Now, here's the thing about it, and uh, somebody gave me a little criticism when I was talking about Fur Elise before, saying that Fur Elise isn't really for beginners, and that's true. Um, the Past the first part that I'm going to show you just now, uh, it does get difficult pretty quick, and that isn't recommended so much for beginners, especially getting it up to speed and everything else. But this first part, I find that a lot of students can handle. I've had 10 year olds be able to play the opening to this piece. Now, they were pretty good, but um, it's it's really not that bad. And it looks more complicated than it really is. The great thing about it, let me get the piano here again. The great thing about it is that it's very repetitive. So you have the opening melody that everybody recognizes. And then you repeat it again. And it just changes a little bit there at the end. And then of course you have a, like a little additional section here. This part's not too bad either. The left hand, same thing. It's really the same thing. A, E, A, E, E, G sharp, A, A, E, A, A, E, A, A, E, G sharp. So that makes it so much easier to do. Now putting your hands together can be a little tricky at first. Of course, I play this tons and tons of times, so I really can play it nice and smooth. The second part's the same kind of thing. It's just different patterns, but they do repeat over and over again. It's really nothing too, too bad. then it comes back to that first section again. So that makes it super, super manageable. If you wanna learn this one, learn up to, let me get this whole sheet in here. Um, start from the beginning, learn through almost four lines down uh, to where you get to this first repeat here. Learn there, because after that, that's the part that uh, gives students a lot of trouble. There's a lot more complex rhythms grace notes, things like that going on. So it definitely gets quite a bit more complicated after that. Okay, next piece. Okay, the Prelude in C from the Well-Tempered Clavier book one. This is by Johann Sebastian Bach. And if you're getting new into playing Bach, I recommend you start with this one first. Again, 
The great thing about it is it's repetitive, it's simplistic, and that's pretty much what you want to look for when you are doing these pieces, because it's kind of the same thing over and over again, except it changes notes a little bit from measure to measure. See, like, even this one, you're just changing just slightly there. But it's the same repeated rhythm over and over again. And one of the other reasons that I love to have beginner students do this one, or in the beginner side rather, is that the whole value of this piece, or the whole complexity and what makes it musical and what makes it sound good, is the notes are easy. But what is difficult, or more on the difficult side, that makes the piece, in my opinion, is the differences in dynamics and adding in those dynamics because you can really make it sound good if you add in the dynamics and it gives it so much more flavor and it's just it's such a nice piece it's really easy to learn it's really a highly recommended one i know i talk about it and show you guys this one all the time but if you're new to the channel um, you need to grab this one again where is the link it is in the description just just for you yes you next piece okay this piece the prelude in e minor opus 28 number four it just rolls right off the tongue um, so just know it as the Prelude in E minor by Chopin, or Chopin, or Chopin. Don't say Chopin, though. People will get mad at you. Okay, this one. What's great about this one is, first of all, Chopin pieces are notoriously difficult, or at least moderately to extremely difficult. The great thing about it is if you want to get into playing Chopin, which has a really nice lyrical kind of sound to it, really, it's from the um, Romantic era, so it has just... Like I said, that very lyrical sound. It's really cool, really different compared to Bach. Um, this is the piece you want to start out with, and there's a lot of reasons why. One of the reasons why is, again, you have these repeated patterns in the left hand where the chords are just changing by a little bit. You know, so it's really easier to get the hang of. And then the right hand is really simple. There's a lot of longer notes, dotted half notes, quarter notes, things like that. This one again is all about the dynamics and the phrases, meaning that you're gonna be connecting the notes between these slurs here. So I'm just gonna play the opening line here. You've probably all heard this one before. so forth. I'm not going to play the whole thing because the whole point of this lesson is just to kind of show you what these are all about and the ones I recommend. The Me showing you exactly how to play it would be a whole different beast by itself. Okay, um, and then this one, let me just kind of look through it some more, see if I can give you any more hints. It never really gets really that complicated. You have some things going on. <coughs> Oops. Uh... You have some triplets and things, but nothing ever really crazy. So highly recommended for this one. It's also a classic. You've probably heard it in movies and all around. Next piece. Okay, this one was actually recommended by our student Andy in the last live stream, and I took a look at it. I had played it or part of it before. I was kind of scratching my head as to what it sounded like and what it was like. And I agree with him that this one is really great for beginners on the beginner side. There's a little bit more going on here. You can see with the, the keys, the time signature especially, I feel like is needlessly complicated. Um, it's really 4-4 four, four without bar lines is the way I would think about it. So as long as you're counting each note value, you're probably good to go. Um, but it's it's kind of confusing the way it's written and now I'm sure there's some reason behind it um, If somebody lit, could let me know in the chat why that is I would love that because I love sharing Knowledge I actually learn stuff from these videos from you guys in the comments as well um, so not good not see Hopefully I pronounced it right uh, Some people might grill me over it, but that's okay by Eric 
satay. Hopefully I got that right too. Uh, all right, so let's take here. It's not my problem. I don't, uh, you know, I don't know every language and uh, every how to pronounce everything. Okay, so here we go. Um, this one. What's great about this one is it looks complicated, right? But your left hand again seriously doesn't have a whole lot going on. It really has the same pattern over and over again. As you can see, that's a pattern in what we look for, uh, repetition and simplicity in, in these pieces. So um, I'm just gonna play like maybe the opening line or two for you, so you kind of get a feel for what it sounds like. Oh, the reason I really wanted to add this one in too is it has a different sound to it than um, you know the Bach or even the Chopin. So I wanted to add something with a little bit different flavor to it. So here we go. so forth so it's actually a really really interesting kind of piece again where can you find the link to it in that description okay if you're liking the lesson so far make sure to smash that like button and leave a comment if you can or if you have something interesting to say because that really really helps me out it helps me with the youtube algorithm and it just lets other people know also that this is a quality lesson then they that they can learn from as well. All right, we're going to get into quiz time here where I'm going to ask you some important questions about what we learned today. Okay, quiz time. Everybody likes quizzes, right? You loved them in school, so now we got one here, but it's for a good purpose. It's to make sure that um, you've gotten everything that you need to get out of this lesson. Of course, to get the most out of this lesson, you need to play the pieces that I've given you, but let's take a look here and uh, with some questions that I have just for you. Okay, if you can answer these questions, you understand the lesson. If you can't, you need to go back and see if you can pick out the information. So question one, what should you look for in a piece as a beginner? Should it be A, simplicity, B, fast finger patterns, or C, songs that sound cool? Now you could argue that it could be a mixture of all three of these, but which one of those really sticks out to you. Question two, beyond the notes of a piece, what are some things that you can add into the piece that make the piece sound so much better, make it come alive, make it um, into really, make it sound really, really musical and really good. Okay, I'm gonna show you a recommendation from our student, Rich, in the live stream. All right, he recommends Arabesque by Berg Mueller. Now, this one is a really good choice. Because again, what, what are some of the, the key aspects about it that make it good for on the easier side that's manageable? Well, it's repetitive in the re left hand, right? And by repetitive, I mean in, in a, a good way. And all music, in a, by the way, is repetitive in some nature. Um, all right. So let me show you what this one's all about. And then the right hand too has these like little scale, uh, scale portion patterns. And it is in the key of A minor, meaning no sharps, no flats. Thank goodness, right? All right. So let me get this. I'm going to just play the opening two lines for you just to kind of show you what it's about. Ooh, I missed that last chord there, but that's okay. So you get the idea. It's really not that bad. Um, the cool thing about it actually as well is that, um, let me bring up the whole thing so you can see what I'm, I'm seeing. You, uh, the cool thing about it is in the second section. It kind of switches hands to where um, a lot of the activity before was in the right hand in the melody. And then now there's actually kind of a double melody, a, mounter, a melody and a counter melody going on uh, with those little scale patterns now in the left hand. So it's a really, really neat piece. It's really good practice too. Um, like I said, practicing in between both hands and then you return to the opening portion of the piece again. Okay, another suggestion we got was a collection of sonatinas 
by Clementi. And these are actually really good as well. Now they're a little bit more complicated than some of the other ones I've been talking about because there's a little bit more going on uh, between each hand, but they're really scale patterns and um, it's in the key of C and there's not a whole lot of accidentals going on. Um, this first one you may have heard already, so let's try it out. <laughs> you can tell I haven't played this one in a while. And then so forth. So there's the opening there for you. So I'd have to take a look at this one because it's been a while. But there's a huge collection of these um, that you can take a look at. And again, I've included that link there in the description. Okay, one of our students mentioned Undertale, the, the video game and the soundtrack that goes along with it. And actually, I'm going to make a lesson on this pretty soon. It's actually scheduled on the schedule for our live streams. But um, this one is actually a pretty good choice for beginners. There's a little bit more going on here, but these songs, these pieces, I'm telling you, are freaking awesome. In fact, I'm going to play like maybe the opening two here or just, you know, I'm not going to play too long because I want to make sure we get to more stuff. But um, let me, let's take a look here. So these are really cool because it starts out with this theme that repeats over and over again throughout the piece. And it starts out, the cool thing about this too is it starts out simple. It's kind of like the um, canon in D and it gets more and more complex as you go along. So it's really cool. going we will do another line here or so and then they keep getting more and more complex as you go along one of my favorites here is this fallen down uh, theme right here See, and they're really short. That's the cool thing about it. So um, they're, they're, you really feel accomplished when you learn each of these ones. Okay, what you need to do next is make sure you are subscribed and you turn on all those notifications because we have new lessons coming out Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday, all the time, and you don't want to miss a beat. If you want to keep learning here on YouTube, make sure to check out this playlist right here for the number one skill that I recommend you learn on piano, sight reading, and I'll include something else here just for you. So thanks everybody for coming by. It's been your piano teacher, Tim, and I'm gonna see you in the next lesson. Thank you so much.